Hello guys and welcome. Today we are continuing Emmett's Blackboard and we're going to continue our little series on the handstand. And today we're just going to look at... Well, I was going to start with the role of the hands, going to look at the conditioning, but there's a lot of information on that online already. So we're going to do something slightly different now and look at how the hand controls balance and what are the actual balance strategies in a handstand. Now, if we were to keep a rigid body and try to balance it, so we're just going to look at balancing forward. So my first balance strategy when I'm going forward, if I just keep my body fixed, would be to press my big toes in. Now, if my center mass, if that force was able to counteract the force of me going forward, I was able to keep the, the, my center of mass inside my center of pressure, my toes, then I'll remain in balance. If that exceeds it, I must adopt a new balance strategy, which I can do one of two things. I could bend my knees, and that will lower my center of gravity and reduce the leverage on my toes, or I can change my shape by pushing my hips back, and that in itself will bring the center mass back inside the center of pressure. Now we have the same thing going on in a handstand, where we have the hands where effectively the middle finger and the index finger are taking the role of the big toe, and our main center of pressure is here, just at the base of the thumb. So looking about there, it's about an inch from the thing. If we're pressing up and outwards in our hands, our center of pressure will just end up about here, where we have marked. So these are our centers of pressure. This is a bit simplistic, and we can have one a bit closer to the wrist line, where if you're falling back towards your feet, you need to push in. That's why you balancing when you're coming back towards your feet is much harder, because we have much less of a leverage, and generally you need to adopt a shoulder dominant or a hip dominant balance strategy to bring the center of mass back in, under our effective center of pressure. Now, in a good handstand, we're generally, if you look at the difference between a beginner and someone who's advanced in a handstand, the beginner, their hips are going to be all over the place. They're going to be swaying, they're going to be stable, they're going side to side. Whereas if you look at someone who's experienced in hand balancing, they're going to be tight, the body stays fixed, and just little pulses are happening with the fingers or with the wrists just to control the balance. Now this comes down to experience that a lot of times in handstands I'm actually reacting before I've lost balance. I can feel through experience that I'm going to lose balance one way or another and I already have engaged my balance to bring me back in. So, whereas if you've sort of lost balance, if your center mass begins to exceed your center pressure faster than you can control it, then you've got a problem. So, what we're looking at, what we really want to develop in the handstand is basically start thinking of these as a big toe. That's where you're gonna get most your thing. When we start looking at one arms, the balance shifts slightly to a ring finger, but not so much. Our thumb is very, doesn't really do anything in a handstand. It's one of these things in handstands that you hear a lot in yoga circles where we will display our fingers as wide as possible and you know lift our middle knuckles. This is a bit of a mistake. We want to think once again as our hands as feet. So we look at what our feet are doing. We've got three main points of contact. We've got actually nine centers of pressure on the feet, but it's a bit outside the scope for this. So we've got big toes and toes to a certain degree ball of the foot, and heel of the foot. Exact same thing here. Big toe, ball of the foot, heel of the foot. Our balance is going to be centered here and rocking backwards and forwards between it. We don't, if you look at your feet, your toes all point in the same direction because that's their main effective leverage. Same with handstands. We don't want to splay our fingers like this. We want to keep them roughly lined up. We want to be able to keep these two. If we splay them, we reduce the amount of force we can, thing, can apply. So we need to keep them parallel, for as parallel as they can get. And in that, we are able to generate much more leverage. Now, the same thing applies that we need to look at our balance order. So, once we've got our balance order in our shoulders, if we look at what happens when you overbalance. So, we overbalance, we've got a straight shape, nice straight shape. So, initially we're going to be pulsing the little finger, not squeezing. And you can see this in one of my videos with Sev doing the pull-ups on the wall. So, she's overbalanced, she's pulsed, and that's going to send the balance wave back up the body and hopefully correct it. Now, if her center mass exceeds the effective center of pressure that her fingers are exerting, then she needs to do something such as push through the shoulders to open the shoulder line. That will make an arch shape and bring the center mass back inside the center of pressure. If that doesn't work, an even bigger push, more opening shoulders and bending of the back. This is when you see a hollow back or one of those banana arch handstands. 
that's effectively what they're doing. They're bringing the center mass back inside the center pressure. Similar thing happens when we're coming back to the feet. When you're coming back to the feet, you have much less of an effective center pressure to work with. So we've got basically from this spot to this line here, where if you look at your wrist, it's effectively one inch. So we've got basically one inch of leverage we can exert. So over this, we need to, first things first, what will happen, there's a lot of balance strategies, but we'll speak at the ideal one where we don't bend our arms, we'll keep our arms straight. We're gonna ram the shoulders forward, that's gonna break our shoulder line. The same on the counteract that and pull the center mass through. If we do that, we would end up planching. If you're beast, that's great. For most people, they're not beast mode yet. So you need to break the shoulders. This will keep the weight, bring the weight back into our, our main center of pressure. At the same time, you're gonna pike at the hips. That will bring the center mass back inside the center of pressure. And then at the same time, you can just pause there and restack. This all makes sense, but the main point I'm trying to get across is we need to think center pressures and effective center pressures. So we need to look at when you're, this is the practical side, when we're doing what's called the cambered hand position. If we look at it, so see here, we pull our fingers back. You feel just by pulling your fingers back, suddenly you can exert a lot more pressure. Now we want to find the point where we still have even pressure on this bit of the hand, but it's not being forced up. So play around with that a bit, just pull those fingers back. You might need to stretch your fingers out. There's a lot of information on that online. I think Yuri Marmerstein has quite a good video on it. Definitely worth watching. So anyway, I hope that makes sense on what we're talking about when we're talking about balance on our hands as feet. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you like it, hit subscribe. Thank you guys. Catch